So what is a cohesive oeuvre? Well, an oeuvre is just a fancy word for the collected works of any artist. Stephen King's gigantic, prolific list of novels, that's an oeuvre. Everything Picasso painted, that's his oeuvre. Everything Werner Herzog directed is his oeuvre. Sometimes a director explores similar themes, elements, settings, characters, or ideas over the course of their career, and over the course of several works. Enough that it feels connected, and I'm not just talking about something like a shared universe, like the connections among most of Kevin Smith's films. Quentin Tarantino's films apparently take place in a shared universe, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that his films have themes of revenge, violence, the ugliness of mankind. You can watch a Tarantino film and you can sort of tell that he directed it just because of certain uh, thematic elements, because of certain characters. Tim Burton's films have an aesthetic cohesiveness to them, uh, as well as an overall feeling of being playfully dark. Ingmar Bergman's films uh, revisited themes of faith many times over the course of his oeuvre, and so on and so forth. Because of this, it's easy to remember Tarantino's films, uh, Burton's films, Bergman's films, so many others. You can just sit there and list Tarantino's films. Same with Burton. His films remind you of him. Ridley Scott's films don't do that. They don't put you in mind of its inherent Ridley Scottness, because that's just not his thing. But it's not a failing, it's just the way he chose to do his career. He didn't want to focus on one particular theme, or one aesthetic, or one type of character, or anything like that. Not even one time period. He just made movies. He made movies that he thought would be good. Some take place in the distant future, some in the past, some in the present, some distantly in the past. They range from science fiction, to historical drama, to crime movies, and everything in between. The reason I'm bringing all of this up is because in the past few years, there has been this sentiment that I've noticed on the internet due to a couple of Scott's movies being disappointing. This exclamation of, well, Ridley Scott only made two great movies, Blade Runner and Alien, and that was decades ago. What has he done lately? But that's not true. At all. And I, I think I know why we do this. See, we forget movies really Scott made because his movies don't remind us of him. He just makes movies. The Duelists. Ever heard of it? Maybe not, right? Uh, but it holds 91% at Rotten Tomatoes. It's almost unanimous. It won an award at Cannes. And it's great. It's about these two men in France in 1800. The first man, played by Harvey Keitel, had a duel with the nephew of a politician. So another man, played by Keith Carradine, is sent to arrest Harvey Keitel. So Harvey Keitel challenges him to a duel. And that starts this big, epic rivalry that lasts for years and years. It's amazing. It's like if a cop pulled you over and you said, No, you're under arrest! Thelma and Louise. Nobody remembers that Ridley Scott directed this. I told this to someone the other day, and this person had seen it multiple times and still did not know really Scott directed it. Uh, there's nothing particularly Scott-like about it. It's just a great movie about women who have been mistreated, and they've had enough, and they're not going to take it anymore. It's really good. I just watched it for the first time the other day. Uh, it holds up really well. Gladiator gets this negative backlash. It lasts even today. The problem with broad consensus on Gladiator is that it won Best Picture at the Oscars uh, when other allegedly more deserving movies should have. Fine, whatever. Uh, that's fine. You, you can think that, and maybe I do too. But how does that take away from the film itself? It's a gorgeous movie with strong acting and beautiful sets. It's engaging and gripping and full of memorable visuals and lines. It's a stunning film. Black Hawk Down. Uh, it's a really exciting movie. I don't like everything about it, uh, but it's worth watching for certain. Matchstick Man. Really good, twisty, con man crime movie. 82% on Rotten Tomatoes. Very, very good critical reaction at the time. People don't really remember it, though. I mean, Roger Ebert called it the best con artist movie since The Sting. 
And again, there are just no trademarks of Scott in it, you know, so people don't always remember it was his movie, but it's really good, and it's another one in his oeuvre. It's just not a cohesive oeuvre. And The Martian is awesome. If you haven't seen it, go see it now. Uh, so anyway, Ridley Scott has made a lot of great movies. Uh, now, I don't think they've all been his best work, but I think even the movies that people consider failures are still memorable. Uh, you know what? I like Legend. Uh, it's pretty. <laughs> it's a pretty movie. And uh, Tim Curry is the best devil. They haven't all been good, but I think he gets shortchanged when the internet talks about the best directors of the past 30 or 40 years. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact that he is so all over the place that we don't instantly recall some of his best work. 